Hi everyone, this is Board Games and Bourbon. I'm Glenn Flaherty, and right now I want to talk to you about Rolling Village, which is a new print and play coming to you from the creator of Lantern, which is kind of like a survival game using dice and manipulation, trying to make it all the way through this torturous path. Now I'm going to put a link to that game in this video so you can check it out, but this one here is more about developing a town, and just like that game, you're going to use dice, but what this provides me with is a really interesting way to use the dice. You're going to use it in three different ways, and also has an interesting scoring criteria, which is to say it's almost like a urban sprawl you're going to use, and the urban sprawl kind of creates this uh, scoring engine for you, and by the end of the game, you're scoring big points. Now, what you're doing in the game is you're going to roll these dice, and the dice are going to allow you to create what are called projects. Now, the projects in the game, if you roll a 1 and a 2, you build a house. If you roll a 2 and a 5, you build a forest. If you roll a 3 and a 6, you build a lake. If you have two equal dice, you've built a town square, which can score you 10 points in the game. The other die that you roll tells you which column you place it in. What space here, what row you place it in, will give you points. So if I build a house and I put it in column one, I'm going to score three points. Should column, or excuse me, should row three, four score, or row five, six score, or seven, eight, nine, ten, all the way down. And the way it works is I roll it once. I'm going to get two numbers. Wow, in that case, I got equals, uh, which is a special case. I'll talk about that in a minute. But let's suppose it was a three and a one. If I roll this, I would have to build, let's put the one first, a number one project, which is going to be a house, and I have to build it in row three, and I can put it wherever I choose, okay? And then I have to build a number three project, in this case, which is a lake, and put it in column one, which is anywhere I choose here. Now, in the case where I rolled doubles, uh, what would happen is I built a town square, and the first thing I do is I place a number three project in the three rows somewhere, and then I put a town square wherever I want. And when I put the town square wherever I want, if it is at the end of the game, touching a lake, forest, and a house, I'm going to get 10 points. So you can really get a lot of points that way. The game plays in about 10 minutes for one and multiple players. Uh, solo, you want to break 60 points. So there's really... Uh, pretty easy setup and play to it. There's also bonuses which kind of uh, create that engine in a pretty fun way. So let me just show you how to play it and that'll give you a taste for it, okay? So to start the game, you're going to roll two dice and this is kind of the setup. Wow, two sixes. I love rolling doubles. So what that means is I can, um, for the preparation, I'm going to roll those two dice and that means in that column I can put whatever I want, okay? They just have to be two items that are different. So as it turns out, I'm going to put two things in the sixth column. So I'll go ahead and I'll build a house here and I want to encapsulate that three because should that row be triggered, I'm going to get three points. I'll show you how it gets triggered in one moment. The other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put a farce. I'm going to put a farce all the way down here. I'm going to do that for two reasons. One, it gives me big numbers that can trigger. The other is that I want to give each of these projects, the houses and the forest, room to sprawl. Because if my forest, for example, sprawls a few rows up, whenever those rows trigger, it'll ricochet all the way down and score me three points again, which is pretty darn big. Okay, so I set that up. Now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to roll. So I'm going to roll this here, and we're going to stay with me too because this is going to show the implications of the gameplay. I have a one and a five. So I'm going to put my house in row five somewhere. So I'm going to go ahead and put it right here to start with, okay? I'm going to start having that structure. And then the other thing I have here is a five, which is a forest that goes in row one. So I'm going to put my forest over here. Okay, I want to do that so that I have maximum triggering uh, capacity. Okay, so I, now I've used each of these combos, the one versus the five and the five versus one. Now to score, I combine them, one plus five equals six, and that triggers the five, six row. Now, uh, nothing here, nothing here, nothing here, nothing here, one point there. So I get one point, boom, and I'm on the board. And that's as simple as it goes. But watch how it kind of like grows and meanders around. I roll a one and a six. So put the one in front. I'm going to put a house in row six. So I'm definitely going to put one here. Now, the benefit of putting that there is if I ever have the three, four or the five, six triggered, I'm going to get that combo of four points because it meanders and it touches everything. Okay. Now I have a lake that I'm going to put in number one. Uh, I don't really have any ideal things. I'll just go ahead and on a lark circle that right there and make that my lake. That way at least three's in the running. And now my combination there is four. 
uh, or excuse me, combination there is seven. That's a one and that's a six. So I come down to seven, it scores. I only have two points there, so I only get two points. Say la vie. Now I've reached round three and has a star. And what the star does is the star lets me add any project I want to the board. But once I use it, it's gone and my selection for the next star is gonna be reduced to two. So I'm gonna roll again. Uh, wow, I love getting that six, six and five. Okay, so my number five is a forest. I'm gonna put that in number six. Totally cool with that, that goes right there. Uh, then I have a number six project, a lake that goes in row five. Hmm. Well, I guess I'll put it here. It doesn't really matter, but I'm going to do that anyway. Now, the good thing is, because I have a forest, a lake, and a tree, or excuse me, a house, a house, a lake, and a forest, if I were to put the town square there, it'd be worth 10 points because it's touching all of them. Okay, this adds up to 11. So 11 is down here. I go all the way over till it touches something, and I get three points. So I get three. But there's more to it. What I can do is I can actually cover something else. And this is where you can start really ricocheting the points. Now, I really don't know what to do, so I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna go ahead with lake. I'm gonna use my lake and I'm gonna circle that three, okay? So now that I score 11, it's down here, I'm gonna get three plus that three. If I had a point circled, encapsulated up there, I'd get that too, but I don't, so I get six points. Okay, so I have six. My total here is nine for the first three. If my row total is ever two or 12, I get to choose whatever row I want. Continuing on, I roll these two. I have a two and a four. Okay, my number two structure is a forest, and I'm gonna put that in row four. A forest in row four. All right, well, let's just, uh, a forest in row four. Hmm, let's go here pick up that too. Maybe I can touch them. If I can get something there, then it can ricochet down. And then I'm going to build a number four, which is a house in row two. House in row two. Let's go here. Let's just get points on the board. That's what I say. Two plus four is six. So the six is going to trigger nothing, 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 nothing. One, but because the structure meanders up here, I get that three. So I get four right away. Okay. Not bad. Moving on. Two and a six. The two is a forest. I put it over here. Oh, no. Two. Ah, shoot. Okay. Well, it's not the worst. It can kind of trigger all right there. Now, if anything in the future takes up a, a number six row, uh, I have to just put it next door. If you, if you run out of a column, I should say, you just put it next door. Okay. Um, okay. So that was my forest in row six. Now I have my number six. A lake goes in row uh, column two. Again, nothing that great. I'm just going to put it there so I have something to score. Okay, now I add them together, that's eight, that's over here. That is gonna give me just one point, one solitary point. Boy, that is just down in the dumps, poor planning there, okay. Um, okay, now uh, let's add to the next one, number six. Okay, let's see what we got going on here. One and three. Um, one and three, so it's a house going in yeah, a house is going to go in number three. Uh, let's put a house here, try to get that. I'm also going to do that because I know this total is four and I wanted to trigger. And then I have number three, a lake that's going to go in over here. And then I'm going to go right there in column one. Okay, so now number four, uh, row three, four triggers. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, a hook's down. Ah, check this out. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, a hook's down. Eight, nine. Uh, nine. Yeah, darn. Okay, but that's okay. I'll take that. But now I can also, uh, because it's going to be the sixth thing, use my bonus. So I have to decide what I want to put, a house or a forest. What could I do here? I think what I'm going to do is, because I want to get that two up there, I think I'm going to draw a house right here. Let's be smart about it. Okay, so now when I do that, I have, now I can add it up because I use my bonus. I'm gonna go one, two, three, uh, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 10, 11. Okay, so now I got 11 points. You know, not, not earth shattering, but not too bad. So 11 for 16 points there. Okay, not bad. Now remember, I'm trying to get to 60. Not looking too good. I have 25 points here, but you know, que sera. All right, let's move on. One and four again. I have a house. That's going in column four. Ooh, I am going to go ahead, put my house right here. 
get that one. Okay, and then I have a number four, which is a house, and it's going to go in column one. A house in column one. All right, got that done. That totals the five. So we have nothing. We have one point. Now this one point is going to trigger back, and it's going to pick that one up. So I actually got four points there, four. Uh, five, that's going to ricochet up five up to here and give me eight. All right, so I got eight points there. Not too bad. Let's move on. You can see how quickly the game goes. Two and six, uh, two and three. So I have a two, which is a forest. A forest is going to go in column three. A forest, huh? Ah, shoot. Well, let's just circle stuff. Let's get it going. And then I have a number three, which is a lake, is going to go over here somewhere. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put my lake here. By doing that, I've now created the structure that really meanders all around. So that's pretty good. Okay, that totals up to six, uh, six points, six numbers. So that's my column here. Five, six is going to trigger. This right here is going to trigger my three and my one. So that's four. I come over here. That's five. And uh, that's it. Five. Okay, five points. Woo, getting tough. Moving on. Okay, six and four. Okay, my number four structure is a house. Now, because six is taken, I can put my house wherever I want. Um, I think, I'm, and that means over here somewhere. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put my house here, just because. Okay, and then my number six structure is a lake that goes in row four. Um, it doesn't really matter at this point. You're gonna go there. And what I need now is, the total there is 10. Hmm. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add my forest, and my forest is going to go, where do I want my forest to go? It doesn't seem like it would really help me anywhere, but I'm gonna go ahead and add it there anyway. Okay, so now I trigger my 10 row. So I have three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, goes up 10, 11, 12. So I got 12 points. Okay, so I'm at, I scored a 8, 12, that's 20, 25 points right there alone. If I add those up, what do I have here? Uh, I have 9 plus 16 is going to give me 25, and 25 in that last one. So I scored 50 points. Not good enough to be mayor, but, uh, or maybe I'm the outgoing mayor. So we're going to call me and myself a uh, Mayor Mick Fail. Yes, wonderful. Okay, and anyway, that's how you play the game. It's pretty straightforward, um, and you can download it for free, which is even better. I'll put a link in this video. Uh, if you have any questions about how to play it, let me know. I'm happy to answer, and until next time, friends, thank you so much, and take care. Bye.